Your Excellency, the Apostolic Nuncio, my brother priests, women and men in consecrated life, dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, and all of those who are joining us on the Eternal Word television network, Catholic TV in Boston, the Salt and Light Catholic television network in Canada, and the Catholic channel of Sirius XM Radio. While the church today continues her Lenten journey and marks this as the second Sunday of Lent, we pause long enough to reflect on a very special anniversary, an anniversary that falls in these very days. I think all of us can remember what took place in Rome one year ago, March 13th, 2013. It has been a year since that white smoke appeared from the chimney at St. Peter's, at the Sistine Chapel, and what a year it has been. Inside the conclave, moments earlier, there had been silence, intense prayer, as the cardinals opened their hearts to the Holy Spirit. And then outside, moments later, was the great excitement in the square as people first cheered the announcement, Abemus Papam, we have a Pope. And then they all responded, Viva il Papa, long live the Pope. Those voices highlighted the understanding all of us have of why, why our Holy Father is so important that the Pope is the living continuity with Peter and therefore with Jesus and his gospel. The Pope, every Pope, succeeds to the role of Peter and the awesome responsibility of teaching the faith and providing pastoral leadership for the whole church universal. Around that magnificent dome, that crowns the Basilica of St. Peter's, hundreds of feet in the air, above the place where both tradition and excavation now tell us Peter is buried, there is this inscription in Latin, in huge lettering, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. The fulfillment of the Petrine promise is recorded as well in the pages of the Gospel. St. John tells us how, after the resurrection, Jesus confirmed Peter in the role of shepherd and leader of his church. Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to Peter, and Peter replied, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, then feed my sheep. In fact, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, referred to that very text in his homily, March 19th, 2013, at the Mass inaugurating his pontificate. Today, then, our hearts are filled with both faith and love. We renew our faith in the continuing presence of Christ, our Lord and divine teacher, in the teaching office, embodied in the successor to Peter. We also have hearts filled with love for the person who now carries on that awesome Petrine ministry, Pope Francis. In the readings for this second Sunday of Lent, we're reminded how God called Abram and said, go forth from the land of your kinfolk and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. If you do, if you hear and heed my call, all the communities of the earth will find blessing in you. Somehow, we, that call takes on a new meaning as it can easily be applied to Pope Francis, who began his ministry by telling us 
that the cardinals went to the very ends of the earth to find a successor to Pope Benedict. And Pope Francis's response echoes the words of that first reading. Abram went as the Lord directed him. Pope Francis speaks often of our need to be open to the inspiration and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, to be able to go where the Spirit calls us. We're also witnessing the blessing recognized increasingly throughout the world that Pope Francis is to all the communities of the world. We hear from many, many voices about the Francis effect, the influence and impact he's having, not just within the church, but on communities all around the world. The gospel today speaks of the transfiguration, how Peter, James, and John, his brother, were taken by Jesus to the high mountain where he was transfigured before them. And once again, this reading for the liturgy for today finds resonance in the election of Pope Francis that we're celebrating. Certainly in the short time that he has served as successor to Peter, the whole world has come to see in him this radiant figure through whom the light of Christ just seems to shine. Somehow we see that in him and everyone seems to see that light. Who, who is this Pope? During the interview published in America Magazine shortly after his election, he very humbly answered, I'm a sinner. This self-identification should not be news to anyone. We're all sinners. But everywhere we see Pope Francis, his smile reflecting a light and a joy. Why? What's the reason for, for this joy? What's the reason for this light that comes through that people see? It is, he tells us, the overwhelming blessing of God's love. God's love that embraces us as we make our way, our journey through life. Although sinners, we are sinners, he said, whom the Lord has looked upon, whom the Lord has embraced. We are those to whom the Lord shows mercy and calls. The motto of Pope Francis under his coat of arms is in reference to the call of St. Matthew, the tax collector. The Lord not only offers his mercy, not only does the Lord offer his forgiveness, but he calls him to follow him. And isn't that what you and I experience in the Lord Jesus? Isn't that what you and I experience in Lent? Once again, we recognize the forgiveness of God, the mercy of God, the loving embrace of God. All of us, all of us have to admit, as our Holy Father gave us the courage to say, we're all sinners. But God's mercy, God's love is always there, and he calls us. And this truth we cannot keep to ourselves. The Pope emphasizes in his message for Lent this year, wherever we go, we're called as Christians to proclaim the liberating news that forgiveness for sins is possible, that God is greater than our sinfulness, that he freely loves us at all times, and that we are made for communion with him 
and eternal life. And some signs of the vision, mission, ministry of Pope Francis over the past year is found expressed in his apostolic exhortation, Evangelii Gaudium, the joy of the gospel. The joy of the gospel is not only the name of his first apostolic exhortation, I think it's a description of his ministry, a description of what seems just to radiate from him, and it's reflected in his words. Pope Francis reminds us, he begins that exhortation with these words, the joy of the gospel fills the hearts and lives of all who encounter Jesus. The new evangelization, the whole action of the church in evangelizing, in bringing people to Christ, in inviting people to come and encounter the Lord, in inviting them to the mercy of God, in inviting them, bringing them to this experience of a God who is always there for us. As our Holy Father tells us, God never tires of forgiving us. We may get tired of asking for forgiveness, but the new evangelization is the whole activity of bringing people, calling people, helping people encounter Jesus so that they can experience the joy of living as a follower of Christ. This apostolic exhortation does not see the world, the Pope says, through rose-colored glasses. The Pope tells us, I realize, of course, that joy is not expressed the same way at all times, especially in moments of great difficulty. What our Holy Father is reminding us is that all of us, all of us, as we make our way through the human condition, as we bear the weight of the cross, sometimes the cross we fashion ourselves, God's mercy, God's love, God's forgiveness is always there. For the person who has encountered Jesus Christ, who has experienced the risen Lord, and who tries to live every day conscious of the presence, the presence of God, the presence of God's Spirit, there is a serenity. There is a profound sense of joy. This is what the Pope was talking about. The joy of the gospel that touches us even in our weakness, even in the human condition. The lives of the first disciples who encountered the risen Christ were never the same after. And the same is true for you and for me today. As agents of the new evangelization, we're called we're called to renew and deepen our faith, our faith in a God who loves us, a God who forgives us, a God who invites us to walk with him, and then to grow in confidence in that message, in that truth, and then simply to share it. Our faith and our effort to live should then transform us should change us so that the light of the gospel of God's love can shine through us. The account in the gospel of the transfiguration is intended also for us, for our instruction. We are to be salt and light. Our lives should reflect the light and the love of Christ. It should simply come through us. And isn't that what we see in Pope Francis? In a special audience on March 16, 2013, with about 5,000 journalists from around the world who had covered the election, Pope Francis revealed why he had chosen the name and became the first pope in history to name himself after Francis of Assisi why he chose that name. He said, after the cardinals in conclave had elected him, he said, a cardinal friend of his said, don't forget 
the poor. Taking his friend's advice to heart, the new pontiff chose to be named after St. Francis of Assisi. That saint, he told the journalists, is, quote, the man of poverty, the man of peace, the man who loves and protects creation. Over the past year, I have been asked countless times, usually by journalists, since that's their job, is Pope Francis changing the church's teaching? The question first arose after his interview in America Magazine, then following the publication of his encyclical Lumen Fide, and now in the wake of the exhortation, the joy of the gospel, and at the conclusion of just about every public talk he gives. The question, is the Pope giving us new teaching? And my answer is always the same. Pope Francis walks, talks, lives, and speaks in that great continuity that connects us through him and all of his predecessors all the way back to Peter and therefore to Christ. His words, his deeds echo the gospel. And we see in him the face, the actions, and we hear in him the words of Jesus. What is engaging about Pope Francis and what does catch the attention of many, many people, both inside and outside the church, is not that he offers us a new gospel. He doesn't. But what he is doing is showing us how you live that gospel, how you do those words. Today, then, as we celebrate his first anniversary, the first anniversary of that announcement, Habemus Papam, and the appearance of Pope Francis on the balcony at St. Peter's for the very first time, we recognize with great joy the extraordinary blessing that he is to the church. We also seek to respond to his challenge, not only to know the gospel, but to live it, not only to recognize we are blessed with the mercy and forgiveness of God, but we've been called, called to walk in the path of the gospel. The invitation of Pope Francis to a fresh way of living the gospel is that bright beacon, a beacon of light and hope shining in our world. Let us once again then join our our voices with those that we remember in St. Peter's Square and around the world a year ago, joyfully acclaiming, Viva il Papa, long live the Pope. God bless him, protect him. God continue to shower him with every grace and blessing as he holds up for you and for me that smiling, challenging, demanding, loving, forgiving face of Christ.